Welcome to Real Guitar Live. So glad to be here with you. And we've got a special guest today, Thomas Perry, guitar player, educator, excellent drummer. We're going to talk about rhythm today. But before we do that, let me just give you a quick rundown on how this is going to go. First, we're going to go ahead and let Thomas do his thing and, and talk about rhythm. Over the years, I've really come to appreciate how much Simple things played with good, tight rhythm sound great. Complex things with sloppy rhythm don't sound good. Mm -hmm. And I've come to realize more and more that really, uh, from the very beginning, I should have students work on rhythm, tight, smooth rhythm. So, you're in luck today. At the end of this presentation, we're going to answer questions. And you can go ahead and ask your questions throughout. Ami is here. Ami, hey, say hey. hi. Hey, hi, guys. And Felix in the background there, too. What's up, guys? They're going to be telling us what questions are asked. We'll try and wait to questions till the end. So ask anything, and then we'll answer questions at the end. But if she sees something that's pertinent right then and there, we might go ahead and include it throughout the presentation. Then after that, we're going to do our usual drawing. We're going to give away a $50 Amazon gift card. This is for members of Real Guitar Success who have completed the practice plan for the month. So if you're not a member yet, there's a trial for two weeks, which you can get in on now, and I'd encourage it. So let's get started. Thomas, take it away. Hi, everybody. So I grew up playing drums, and I played drums professionally, and I started playing guitar about 10 years ago. When I started playing guitar, one of the advantages that I have was I had really good rhythm, but that was it. So all I did, you know, I started with one or two chords and I just played all of these different rhythms and got really used to applying them to guitar. Um, so I was lucky that the rhythm was already taken care of. I realized for a lot of um, students, um, it's not the same. The, the rhythm is kind of a really challenging part. And when you're faced with the rhythm and the chords, it's a lot to take in and it's easy to get discouraged. It's also easy to stay with the same kind of rhythm style and get kind of bored, you know. So I'm here today just to talk a little bit about how to come up with uh, a good solid pulse and foundation for rhythm, and then how to apply it with all of these chords that we're learning. So I wanna start with something really basic, and I wanna start with the idea of quarter notes. A quarter note pulse is your foundation for anything, you know, anything that you're playing. Um, I wanna start with the foundation of just four quarter notes. And I want all, so all to just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and get a really good handle on that. Then I'm gonna turn on a metronome, this scary little device right here. Um, it's such a powerful tool, and I'm gonna show you how to use it. So let's see, let's go with... So I trust everybody out there has a metronome. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's kind of a mixed bag. I, at first, I didn't like using the metronome. It really no. pissed me off when I, I wasn't in line with the metronome. Yeah. I even had a student one time come into the lesson with a metronome. He says, it's broken. What, what's that? Oh, see? I go and the metronome's off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have students that do that too. <laughs> so um, let's start with a simple exercise. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this metronome on. And without playing anything, I want to take our guitar and I just want to mute the strings with my hand. I'm going to take our strumming hand and I just want to strum right with whatever pulse we have. And don't worry if it's a little like off or anything like that in the beginning. Just get a really good idea. So as you can hear with our strumming, um, it's lining up very well to our pulse. Uh, 
Excuse me, it was hot in here. Holy moly. <laughs> I'm not used to this canvas and lights. So with this pulse, what we're going to do is now, I'm going to turn this off just so I can talk without a click in my ear. Um, but as we have this pulse, I want to try just really gentle strokes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And what I want to do is I want to start adding what we call accents. Now we want to get a good foundation for making a groove with our chord progressions. For example, if I'm playing a chord progression, it actually sounds like there's drums going on. So I want to get that through. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start with a simple four, and then we're going to accent on two and four. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. As I'm doing this, look at my hand. What I'm doing is I'm focusing kind of just on these little bass ones, just so the little chuck here. And then the big one, I'm trying to incorporate more of the strings all the way down. Okay. But you notice I'm not like a railroad gate with my arm. I'm not really in there trying to dig in. So this is important for getting all this rhythm stuff because your technique is so important with this. So we're just gonna just do it just so like So low this. notes are the one and two is gonna be the accent which yeah. will be all the strings. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then low. same with three and then four. So I want one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Good. One, two, and so, let's just, just for now. You guys feel free to, to pull out your guitars and do this with us. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. Um, let's grab a G chord. Okay. Just, just for grabbing a chord. I like the G because it's straight across, across the board, you know. We can use all the strings. And let's just work on that same theory, but with this G chord. What we really want to hear is the difference between the one and the two. So the low, the light notes and the accents. Okay. So, for example, one, two. If you look at my hand, what I'm doing is I'm kind of just, just flicking it down a little bit and putting a little more emphasis with my thumb. When I'm doing this. That's all we have to do. So if you're at home doing this and your whole arm is going, you're doing something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. That's so too the, much. The, the key is, yeah, the key is just really little gentle movement. And you can get a lot of power just off of something like that. Another thing I like to do, um, keeping on the whole pulse issue, is I like to tap my foot along with what I'm doing. So we can go back, let's go back, we haven't gone too far yet, let's go back to the very first thing we did, which was just these four chunks. And this time, I want you to tap your foot with each one of these. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Remember we call these quarter notes. Right? Four quarters and a dollar. Four quarter notes and a measure. That's what we're doing right now. One, two. Everything I show you today, we want to think about keeping these four notes, or this this four count right here, and keeping these this your foot going with the tempo the entire time. It's really important. And it takes a while to develop. So if you're having a little difficulty right now doing it, don't worry. It gets easier. So if we take that accent now, we got our foot going. We're tapping along with this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we have a nice, really, a, a really nice tone with our chord, and it sounds a whole lot better than just over and over again. You know, no, it, it brings a little bit of life into it. It has some groove. So let's let's actually pick another chord. Let's practice going between two different chords now, but keeping the pulse. What's tricky about this um, is making your chord and the shape and everything land when you want it to. So like, one, two, I'm just gonna use no accents. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. 
This is something I struggled with a lot when I was doing this. Um, so as we're doing this with our one, with our two and four accents, I want to go one measure of G and then one measure of C, and then one measure of G. So back and forth okay. with those two. One, one thing I found that helps students is when I'm changing chords, I tell them to, it's okay to let go of the first chord yeah, yeah. Uh, before you actually yeah. go. It's okay if there's a space there. Yeah. I think the important part is hitting it on the downbeat. Yeah. Yeah, when it's supposed to happen. That's a good tip. All right, so let's try a G and C, one measure of each, but let's try that two and four backbeat. Right? With the with the accents. Yeah, very good. One, two, three, four. Here we go. I'm also tapping my foot as we do this. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I feel like rubbing my head and <laughs> rubbing my belly and tapping my head. The hardest thing is learning to sing and do this at the same oh, time. Oh, no, oh, I'm man. not going there yet. Good job. All right. So you mentioned that's a backbeat. I've, I've heard that term. Into that. Okay. So a backbeat, what it is, if when you when you go to a concert, when you go to church, um, when there's music going on, everybody's clapping, usually to this two and four thing. Oh, okay. Unless you're on one and three. Don't don't clap on one and three. Always clap on two and four. That's your backbeat. That's what we call it. When I'm playing drums, um, ka, uh, 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 ka. That snare drum right there is my backbeat. And we really that really drives the song and, and really makes it groove, you know. And, and remember, one of the things we want to be able to do with whatever progression we're playing, regardless if it's a song that you're learning or something that you're making up, it's got to groove. It's got to sound good. And so that's the purpose of doing all this today. So the word backbeat is going to come in uh, uh, a few times uh, in this lesson as well. Okay, good. As well as pulse. I'm going to say pulse so many times you're going to be tired of it. Um, so we have... Now we've got this quarter note pulse going. We've got a backbeat. Um, let's talk about the next, well, let me back up. Let's explain these notes really quick, just in case anybody out there doesn't really understand where we're, com where we're coming from. Let's pretend that the quarter notes are a fence. One, two, three, and four as for, that's our standard, right? On one side of the fence, we have notes that um, are slower, right? Or contain less, less beats. So here's, here's an example. Our quarter notes go along with one, two, three, four, just like that. Our, if the other side of the fence has some half notes, one, two, three, four. When we play half notes, that means they're worth two beats. We, uh, in, in what we're doing right now, we're only gonna strum them or strike them once. One, two, three, four, but the space is still there in between them. Those are half notes. The other one is a whole note. A whole note will contain four beats, but you only hit it once. One two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So on the other side of the fence is where we start going faster. The next note in line uh, after quarter notes, the next note is an eighth note. Okay. Um, and what we're doing now, we're taking this pulse and we're subdividing it. Subdivision is an example of how we can fit more in between the spaces. Here's, here's what I mean. So you have some quarter notes here. You hear there's space in between though. So what we're gonna do, this is, these are quarter notes. One, two, three, four. If I apply eighth notes to the top of it, one and two and three and four and, so we're subdividing each one of these beats and we're adding more in between it, equally actually. So one and two and three and oh, four and I see you're using the end two, to account for the and eighth four. note. And you notice I still have my pulse. You guys hear that? I'm not going one and two and three. I'm going one and two and three and and you you, you see you see his head? Beat. Yeah, yeah. That that's what we want. That's how you know it's working, right? Oh. When, when you can feel that groove, when your head bobs, when your foot moves, that's what we want. A band leader told me I have to go like this because if I go like this, <laughs> I don't like the music. <laughs> Unless you close your eyes and you're really into it. Um, so. So let's talk about this 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 eighth note idea for for a minute. Um, let's grab. A, why don't we just grab an E chord uh, um, for right now, just to use something different. And let's start off a little similar to what we did before. And and why don't we just try um, 
some eighth notes. But real quick, I want to turn on this metronome one more time, and I want you to understand that when we listen to this metronome, the metronome is clicking quarter notes. Okay. So we want to be able to apply Three, our eighth four. notes on top of it. So as I'm listening to this, this is just like when I was clapping. So we got one and two and three and four and one and two. The pulse is still there. One and two and three and four. And I'm also, this, this is a challenge, I'm also tapping my foot. One and two and three and four and one and two. And I'm only tapping my foot on the numbers, not the ands. Four and one and two and three and four. So now, if we get into playing this, I'm going to turn this off just so it's not going. If we get into playing this with a quarter note pulse, and we grab this E chord, we have one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Good. Now, could you hear the accent? The accent also doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be the, the main part of our of our show when playing. So you don't have to worry about it. It doesn't have to be any exaggerated thing like that. Again, it's it's about this feel and about the pulse. We want this to groove. So if I'm just playing I want it to come all the way through like that. Um, so the pulse I was giving you right now which is quarter notes. So it's okay. one and two, two and three, three and four. And three. Again, going into this theory right here, you can see when I want to do an accent, in this case, one, two, three, and four, I'm striking all of the strings. When I only want to do the little ones, the ands, the in-between, I'm just hitting these, these just the little bass ones right here. I think I see where this is going. Right? So we have that going. One and two and three and three. I'm tapping, tapping my foot. Good. So let's get into a groove now. Now remember, we were talking about a backbeat. What I want to do, excuse me, what I want to do with the backbeat is I'm going to put it in there on two and four. This gets a little tricky because you have to know what you're counting. So I'm going to just mute the strings and I'm going to show this accent pattern. One and two and three and four and one and two. So I'm getting away from the pulse in my hand. I'm still tapping my foot to quarter notes. Uh, 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 that's where I'm tapping it at. But now I got two and four. So I got one and two and three and four and one. Yeah. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that really makes a simple progression really easy and, and could come to life and really easy to groove with. Uh, so let's pick uh, three chords. How about uh, G, C, and D? Easy enough. Right? C and D. Yeah, so what if, so let's make something up here. Nope. <laughs> so we all we all hopefully know these chords, and I'm gonna use uh the, the open chords for now. So one and two and then we can go to C. We'll just do a measure of each. Come back to D. And then back to G. And then we'll start all over again on G. G, two, three, four. clubhouse singing along <laughs> so a lot of times um, especially with acoustic guitar where um, we're doing down and up how does that work with a, a down up does it can it still work um you know the the threshold it kind of depends it's, it's relative with eighth notes and uh and tempo meaning how fast we're going that usually dictates where i'm going to start using an up and down kind of stroke 
Um, right now we're going at a tempo to where you can get away just doing these up, uh, just down strokes. It gets a little bit trickier using the bass stuff when you start using up strokes because you really have yeah, to pay attention to, you know. You really got to pay attention to how you're coming up. So it's, it's a little bit different um, way of thinking in terms of your technique and a little bit more planning on where you're going to put the downbeats. Uh, but that's a really good question. It's something that we, we'll... We sh well, we'll cover it in just a minute, um, actually, yeah, adding sure. down and up. It sounds like it's better strokes. to at least start with down just to keep it simpler and kind of get a, a handle on where the back beat is. Yeah, so. yeah, I think so. You know, um, in terms of things you can complicate your life with, uh, it's, it's really easy, you know, to, to just set a goal that's like this that you could nail. So if you're not worried about going up and down yet and just going down, it makes all of this these other concepts a little bit easier um, to get down. Makes so, sense. Yeah, and that's a good point. We should keep that in mind, too. All of this stuff that you do, if you find yourself confused or frustrated or just having a really hard time with it, go back to the beginnings. Go back to what we covered in the beginning of this video. Start each practice with that idea of I'm just going to practice, I'm going to turn on this metronome and I'm going to mute my strings and I'm going to find this pulse first and then build it all the way out like what we're doing in this video. And I'm sure you can watch this video again and again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, this will be recorded. So, yeah. So, it'll be helpful actually to go through and pick up on some more things. When we're talking about pulse, I was applying it to a 4 4 really common time so one two three four there are other time signatures uh, meaning where the beats fall and how we count them um, that are a little bit trickier and I wanted to cover one today sure. um, it comes from the land of three three four uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna mute our strings and we're gonna talk about three beats in a measure as opposed to four what we were doing so what we're gonna do is just one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm not worried about any of the little notes or accents or anything right now. I'm just gonna play this. Um, we can turn on the metronome, you can do it right along with that, and you can tap your foot along with what you're doing. So what's different about three and unique about it is it doesn't feel the same to us internally at first until we get used to it. So what we like to do is break each measure up by adding an accent. The easiest thing to do in this case is maybe just add an accent on one. So what we'll do is we'll accent the one, one, two, three, one, two, three. And this helps us feel how it cycles back around so we can keep all of it in line. So let's, let's, grab, uh, let's grab a G chord, right? And let's do, um, th we're in three, four time, three beats in a measure, accent on one. Okay. One. And and way I count this off. Three beats in the measure. Uh-huh. I know, it, it took me um, a little while when I was growing up to get a hang on three, four, because all the music I was listening to was four, four. Yeah. It's all rock and roll and exactly. stuff. And, yeah. Um, I didn't really hear much three, four until later on, you know, I started branching out to different styles of music. Right, right. Um, so let's let's try this let's try this exercise really quick. So accent on one and then two and three are a little bit lighter. Two, ready, go. One, two, three, one, two, three. And it's like it's funny because you instantly start swinging or moving your head back and forth because you can feel that yeah that pendulum. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. Two, three. one. So that's how we start getting into feeling threes. The neat thing about the accents are, is they're, they're movable. So look what happens now when I take the accent off the one and I'll apply the accent to two and three. Huh. So now I'm gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now this sounds more like a country song, right? So oh, interesting. Okay. Just by moving our accents, we're still using just quarter notes. We're still just playing three notes in a measure, 
but it's how we're playing them and how we're feeling that accent. Three four, in my opinion, is is designed to be a little bit slower because it's quarter note bass. So there's, if you look at a time signature, I'm not sure if you guys know this yet, but the top number will tell you how many beats there are in a measure. The bottom number is gonna tell you what kind of note gets that beat. So the number four on the bottom, so we're doing three, four, the number four on the bottom represents a quarter note, a fourth, mm -hmm. right? So um, there's another time signature that's related to three, four, and that's six, eight. So what we're doing, instead of having three quarter notes in a measure, now we have six eighth notes. Yeah. You can reduce the fraction and still get three four out of it. I see but, six eighth notes pretty often. But yeah, six eight is a lot more common actually than three four. Um, so getting into a six eight, it's, remember it's similar to three, um, and it's a really bluesy kind of thing, right? So one, so the way I'm gonna count this, so let's mute the strings and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the accent's being on one and four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now since this is a little bluesier kind of thing, let's use a seven chord and how about we use like E7. So now you're wondering, okay, well, how does this follow in the pulse? What is the pulse? Is the pulse one, two, three, four, five, six? It's not. The reason we were swaying back and forth with three, four, and six, eight is that's our pulse. That's what we're feeling naturally. That's what the song wants it to be. And that's where I'm tapping my foot. So I'm going oh, okay. tap, dump, dump, tap, dump, dump, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. When I play this on the, on the drums, I'm going boom, tsa, tsa, ka, tsa, tsa, boom, tsa, tsa, ka, tsa, tsa. And that pendulum is going back and forth, and that's where our pulse lies. One, two, three, four, five. So, between these three time signatures, you have a whole bunch to work on as far as applying our backbeat and such. So those are um, the three most common yeah, time signatures, yeah. I would say. I would, yeah, I, I think that's yeah, a I good... I mean, in popular styles of music. Yeah, that's know. a good assumption, you know. Country, rock, blues. Mm -hmm. And a lot, they're closely related to, because even with some country, you could argue that it's in 2-4, but that's still... Oh, right? yeah. Kind of like yeah. four four, but <laughs> twice as long. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when we get further into exploring this now, now I'm going to start using some bar chords. I don't know if you guys are hip um, to bar chords yet, but I really like them because for me they're easy shapes to move. And let's let's talk real quick about applying these things to chords that you're learning. When I started playing guitar, like I said, all I had was rhythm. Right, my favorite thing was like stuff, the chuckas and the 16th notes I, I and things. I didn't know you started on guitar, that's interesting. Yeah, and it's something new every day. Um, and so, it, it, I took all these things I learned from drums. I didn't start with guitar, but, oh. but you know, when I started playing guitar, I took all these things from drums and applied it to there. Um, so what I, what I would do is I would learn uh, one, two, or three chords, and then I would try to put them in whatever order I could with whatever rhythm styles that I could I could think of um, and come up with stuff. And it wasn't like, I mean, I was, I guess I was writing songs, but there was no words to it. There was no melody or anything. It was just strictly from a rhythm perspective. Uh, and I had so much fun doing that, you know, and you can hone a lot of your skills without worrying about singing along with stuff and learning, you know, and, and thinking of melodies. You can think of, just use simple chord progressions for that. Mm. Um, so let's, uh, let, let's use, hmm, let's take a G7. We're going to go to this C7. So we'll just, we'll do a little bit of blues. 12 bar blues is actually a good start with okay. this. We got a, a G7 here, and this is a C9. Uh-huh. So that's our, uh, C9 is our four chord right here, and then our five is uh, D9. So three chords, G7, C9, D9, okay. 
So 12 Bar Blues, I can tell you guys, whether or not you're playing rock or blues or whatever song you think of, uh, 12 Bar Blues is a great, great um, structure to plug your newfound chords into, uh, as long as they are the one, the four, and the five. Um, so we're going to start with this G7, and let's start with, since we were just talking about 6-8, let's do a little bit of 6-8. So one, two, three, four, five. So, By the way, Thomas and I didn't practice that. Yeah. But good. because it's a standard progression, I knew right where he was going. Yeah. It's a standard 12 bar progression. There are neat little tricks you can do with the 12 bar to, to fix what we call turnarounds at the end. But yeah, and it's standard. And so we didn't have to have any kind of communication whatsoever. Yeah. Um, now, playing through this, so, so that's a nice, easy way to just come up with some uh, a bluesy kind of tune. The nice thing about the bar chords, if you guys are hip to them, is we would just played 12 bar and G because our G was our, our root note, our first note. But I can easily do 12 bars in A using the same shapes. We, we started off playing a blues in A when we are starting today. Yeah. Same progression. Mm -hmm. um, so now, what if we go backwards a little bit and we go back to um, our eighth notes? Let's talk about our eighth notes. So I want to put a backbeat on two and four, and I want to do this one. So let's try 12 bar in G, eighth notes, backbeat on two, on and, two four. and four. Okay. Let's see what happens. So we got one, two, three, four. Um, so, so, yeah, not doesn't sound so bluesy anymore. No, no. And then you can still take 12 bar blues. You don't have to play blues. You don't have to play seven chords. You can just use straight major. It's the same idea works. It's just the kind of the progression. That's that's what we're, we're using to give us a template so we can plug in these different styles. Let's talk about getting away from just one and two and three and four and and I want you to sing a drum beat for me. I want you to say boom, tat, boom, boom, tat, 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 boom, boom, tat. So we can start. My first drum gig. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Load your stuff out the back. Uh, so we can take these these grooves that we hear. Let's say like you're lucky enough to to jam with the group already, and your drummer starts playing something, and he plays boom tat boom boom tat. Well, you could sit there and be like boom tat boom boom tat boom, but that's boring. So if we add a little bit of color and rhythm to it, then we can kind of match the drummer. And then the, you and the drummer are playing like this. So if I grab a G chord and I'm going boom, tap, 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 that kind of locks in with what the drums are doing. And if you don't have a drummer, now you can be your own drummer. Now, if you look closely to what I'm doing, I am mindful to be keeping the eighth notes going. 
So meaning one. Yeah, that's a good two, point. Because my first four, thought was I would I would just two, hit right with a drummer, but that sounds a little stale. Yeah, if you're like. It, it, trust me, there's songs that it works in, and you might end up using that someday. Um, but for now, I'm trying to keep this idea going. One, it provides a little bit of texture. Right? A, a little bit of texture in there. It kind of holds it, you know, um, fills it up. Two, it keeps your rhythm more steady and less, uh, for lack of better words, herky-jerky. So if you find yourself a, a little herky-jerky or spazzy with your rhythm, then subdivision, subdividing those notes really helps. So really try to keep that natural movement going of the eighth notes as you're going through it. You heard some other rhythms in there too when I was just playing. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna, this is probably gonna be the last little bit of notes that I'm gonna introduce, but we're gonna go one more. So we went from quarter notes to eighth notes because they're twice as fast. So four times two is eight. Now we're gonna go twice as fast as eighth notes. And so eight times two is 16. That's how we get to our 16th notes. Our 16th notes are counted 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. Notice I'm pulling out that pulse, accenting it. 1 E and a 2 E and a. Anna, you guessed it. I'm tapping my foot. 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. And let's talk about down up strums. At some point, your hand can only go so fast in one direction. It's the same with drums. If I got one hand going, but I need to go faster, it can only go so fast, so I need the other hand to help. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use upstrokes to help us out. So what I wanna do is we're gonna mute the strings again. We're just gonna work on this rhythm. I'm not gonna worry about accents, but I want us to go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a. See if you can do it with no accents. Good. Isn't that cool how they were already, they were already popping in there? Yeah. So now let's accent uh, all the quarter notes. Here we go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E. Already, you hear more of a groove in this than you did with the one E and a two E, the very stale one, right? So just adding the pulse. One E and a three E and a three E and a four E and a. Good job. Um, side note, while practicing this with the metronome, let's, let's try just this. So, there we go. Something like this, you really want to be able to subdivide. So when you do it, make sure that you can, make sure that you can say it with a metronome. That's a really good tip too. Um, and I have my students uh, do that as well. Even before we, we play a note, in order to understand how the note is in relation to the pulse, right? Sometimes saying it and make sure you're in line before it, adding anything else is a really good plan. So would it be one E and a two, two E and, and a three E and, and a four E? And, and you would be listening to the metronome going back and forth, but you would be doing nothing while that was happening. One E and a two E, just saying it. Got it. Because if you get it up here and it gets in here, then it's easier to put out here, mm -hmm. right? So let's say we've done that. We know what we're doing now. Um, one e and a I'm gonna use a bar chord, so I'm playing an open G, right? I'm gonna use just a G major bar chord. One. Good. Now, if we're going faster and, and making it sound smooth and being relaxed, our technique is really, really important. You notice that when we're playing this, we're not, again, doing this. If you're, if you're crazy, wild, strumming, that's gonna wear you out and you're gonna have tennis elbow before you know it. So let's, let's focus while you're doing this on just a little flick of the wrist and just a little more pressure with my thumb when it comes down. I'm not really worried about 
hitting every single string at every second of every strum as well. I think that's important to remember. We get really caught up yeah. in, 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 I need to hit every single string and make sure, you know, it sounds, because we're used to making our chord sound and yeah. hitting every yeah. string with it's all that. Um, so when it comes to this though, it's more about the feeling. So if you're going back and forth and you're missing the high E every once in a while when you're playing this or even the low E, don't worry about it. It's just about the movements and you'll get more precise, you'll get more relaxed. But the most important part is that you're feeling this rhythm and it's mm. nice and smooth when yeah. you're going through it. Um, so let, let's so let's try it. Um, let, let's use uh, let's use bar chords. We're gonna do let's do G major, let's do F major, and then we're gonna come back to C of the fifth string root. Cool. And then uh, so it'll be like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. One whole measure, two E and a three E, and then start again. Now, and we and where was our pulse? Our pulse was actually on one E and a two E and a three E. So our pulse was on all the quarter notes, right. right? But we've been working with the backbeat on two and four. What if we just put a backbeat on it? So what if we go backbeat time? You gotta be careful not to accent the chord when you switch. It's really oh, hard yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, I want to go. <laughs> uh-huh. Everybody Yeah, that's a different feel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it these these concepts, you, you can use them to approach whatever it is that you're learning. Uh, um, sometimes you'll find a song that you want to play, right? And you go look it up online, and all they have are the words and then the chord symbols up top. They have no mention of rhythm, there's no measures. It's kind of up to you to just kind of figure it out and put the two together. Right. So one of the main reasons I'm showing you all this stuff is these are all tools that you can use while trying to learn, look up those songs. You'll get quickly an idea of it's supposed to be a quarter note feel, an eighth note feel, or a sixteenth note feel because you know the song. Mm. And if you don't, turn the song on and listen to it. Sometimes they're gonna mix the rhythms, right? Sometimes they're gonna use quarter notes and eighth notes or even quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes and whatever combination it is. But as long as you're ready with that pulse to switch between those rhythms, it gets a whole lot easier to play those songs. And then it becomes enjoyable. I, I for As a gift, when I was much younger, a friend gave me this fake book that he made of pop songs. Oh. I'm talking, it was this thick. Whoa, ambitious and, and dude. Weird, all the most random pop songs that you can think of. And he wrote them out just like I'm explaining, where it's had the chord symbols up and then the words. And yeah. I was so frustrated, I, I really couldn't do anything with, you know, with, with the majority of them. And I knew these songs. So it took me turning on the song listening to how the rhythm came about, how it, how it worked, and then applying it to what I was reading. So in terms of the chords and then the words underneath. That's a good point. I get students who ask, they find the music online and they just see the chords and the words and they say, how do I know what rhythm? It doesn't tell you what rhythm. You have to either know the song, listen to it, or some way or another figure out the rhythm. It, it's not in, built into that chord yeah. chart. Yeah. And you know we're we're all excited and we just want to play. We don't want to take a whole bunch of time to figure it out. And and you know when, when you're when you when you're learning or in your your earlier stages of uh, of being a musician, um, you don't want to get discouraged by little trivial things like that. Um, it's one of the reasons though why having a teacher is a really good idea as well, or subscribing to a. a lesson service and you know such as yours uh it's such a good thing you know and to have to have people explain stuff like that to you so you don't have to figure it out on your own anyways 
getting getting a little off topic here. Okay. Maybe uh, uh, let's turn it over to Ami. Do we got any questions? We do have a few questions. Cool. Um, let's get them going here. Come on, keep them pouring in. We're we're ready to answer all your questions, guitar playing questions. But certainly, if you have something about rhythm, we'd love to hear it. So we have Paul. Paul says hi from BC, new to hey, guitar Paul. and loving it. Great challenge in seeing progress. Question. Why do seasoned players appear to lift their fret fingers when playing chords just slightly, almost rhythmically? Oh, that's a good one. Wow. Uh, oh, man. So I call that the squeeze, the chord squeeze. Sometimes, that's a great question, man. Let's use, um, let's use some eighth notes, okay? W what I'm doing is I'm going to use that. You know how we muted the, the strings in the beginning? Let's try that. And let's let's make a shape. Um, just just the uh, let's use the bar chord G major. Okay. Now watch this. I'm gonna put a backbeat on two and four, and I'm gonna squeeze that chord on two and four. All of the other hits for right now, I'm just squeeze. gonna I'm just gonna. I'd chuck. use that word. I'm gonna I'd use that. So a lot of times you can stay more relaxed if you have this chord. Even if I'm playing the chord. It's varying degrees of how much little pressure I'm putting on the neck. If I'm playing 16th notes, I'm just squeezing where I want each one of those, those chords to sound. Um, and you can put those on a variety of different, uh, different beats as well. Um, I hope that answers your question. We could say, for, uh, tell me if I'm right, yeah. the squeeze allows you to kind of mute, use a mute technique in mm. the strum to create some rhythm. Yeah. But yeah. it also it, it, it also helps with the tension and the um, muscles that you're using. I get students who make a bar chord and say, you know, after a couple of minutes, I'm exhausted. But really, when people are playing guitar, they're not pressing with a lot of pressure the whole time. They're releasing and, and pressing down again and releasing. Yeah. And, and remember, too, we all started like that. Every one of us who learned bar chords squeezed the, the, everything out of the neck to, to try to make them all sound right. Um, it's not that way forever. And the more you can learn to relax and just lightly touch the string. When I play bar chords now, um, I, there's no pressure at all. There's hardly any pressure going on when I'm, when I'm hitting this. And I do um, squeeze those chords a lot to come up with uh, different backbeats. Good question. Stuff. Yeah. Very good question. Okay, up next we have Graham. Well, Peter in between says thanks. Great lesson. Hey, Peter. <laughs> uh, Graham says, great session, which as a beginner I found easy to follow. Okay. Wish I could master quick chord changes. So I just wanted to throw that out there in case you all had any advice on that. I, you, I have, a, I have well, some Go ahead. Advice. Let me hear what you have to say. So, I've, I've done some sessions on that. What, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm guessing with, with the chord changes is actually going back and forth between two chords. Is that the same idea you have? Yeah. It, it, sometimes people have a hard time going from open to chords. Sometimes it's bar chords. Yeah. Or a real tricky one is going from bar to open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or back uh, and forth. It's all about the transition. And even, be, even before you put the metronome on, just being able to switch between two chords... and making sure all of your, your fingers hit at all the right spots. Take your time and just work on the transition itself. If you're working on a chord, if you're working on a song that has eight chords, right, that's a little excessive, but if it's got eight chords in a row and, and you're struggling through each one of them, you're not doing yourself any good. What you need to do, what, what I would suggest is to start with the first two chords of mm -hmm. the progression and just go back and forth. And plop down, like, like sit, put your stool in front of the TV if you need to. And just go back and forth between both of them. Look out the window. Enjoy life. Don't stare at your hands either. <laughs> Get it going and just practice going back and forth, back and forth. Where this really helped me out was, as you know, F and C are notoriously hard. Right? And you end up having to use them a lot, too. Yeah. And, you know, it, it worrying about, you know, if they sound good and going back and forth and getting the, the first finger to curl up when you're hitting the C. All of these things are really difficult. So I would practice. When I first started playing guitar, I would just sit there and go back and forth. I wouldn't even be worried about a metronome in the beginning. I just want to make you sound good. Then, 
Make an exercise out of it. You can learn so many different, you, you can, man, you can make exercises out of anything. So you take those two chords and you put on your metronome. And then just see how close you can get to being with the metronome going back and forth. Try those new notes that we're using, eighth notes. One and two and one and two and Remember, <clears throat> these might only be the first two chords out of an eight chord series, but the lessons you're gonna learn, getting those down in the transitions are priceless, as well as remember that practicing, like you really have to learn how to practice and you have to practice practicing. It's really hard. We, in the beginning, we don't know what is sufficient. You know, is it, do, do I do this five times? Is that good? I get students asking me, how many times do, do I want you to do this? And my answer is, I want you to do it until you can't mess up, right? Not just do it until you can get it once, but do it until there's no way you can mess up. Um, mm -hmm. And, and this, this takes a while. This is not something that you're going to get in one, two, three, four practice sessions, one month, two months. I get a lot of guitar students who came to me and they've been playing for a while and immediately I see what they're doing. They're trying to play a bunch of chords and they can't really change smoothly from one to the other, but they keep going through the whole song and I see that's probably the biggest thing. It's just what you're talking about. Back up and work on the little details, getting one chord to another instead of trying to just keep going from one, 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 one and not getting it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. I'd say that applies to a lot of things in learning guitar, is, uh, especially if, if you don't have any guidance. P adults in particular tend to keep pushing farther than what they're really ready for. Yeah. yeah. And I don't blame them. It's boring to sit there doing the <laughs> same thing over and over. I get it. But that's actually what creates that sense of uh, accomplishment also when you can do it. Right. Efficiency is a really important thing as well with your practicing. It, the better you get at practicing, the more efficient you become. So not playing through the entire song and messing up every chord on the way, that's just gonna waste time. Like I don't think you're actually gonna get that much better uh, that much sooner by, by playing through a whole song and struggling through the chords. But really, if you take that just two chords at a time, you know, after you're comfortable with the, the, those two chords, add the third chord. And, and again, may, maybe not even, don't worry too much about keeping them in time necessarily. Just get used to playing. <laughs> The, the three in a row and then make your exercise maybe put some strumming with it and then maybe turn on a metronome and then keep adding chord after chord after chord um, as you get better and better I think I'll leave it there I, I could add some more tips but this is by far the biggest part and I'll add a link to some uh, a lesson I've done that can add a few more little tips things like you know Ch um, moving your fingers before the end of the beat and things like that. Planting yeah. certain fingers. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. You guys ready for the next one? Yes. Okay. We have Tom Snyder says, hi there. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. You made it. Yeah, I know Must this Must be guy. Tuesday. He couldn't make Thursday. Yeah. Um, so Tom says, hi there. If I hear beats like one, two, three, one, two, three, how do I know if that is two measures in three, four time, or it's one measure in six, eight time? Is it simply w the speed at which it's <laughs> played? You question. Question. Great question. That's a great question. That, great one. that is a, that's not a very, um, it's not that easy to tell, actually. Yeah, and, and there's, I don't, I don't think there's one specific answer, but yeah. here's, here's my thoughts on it. I mentioned earlier, a, th a three, four feel is traditionally a little bit slower and more waltzy. When I'm thinking about quarter notes, I'm not thinking one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Quarter notes for me are a little bit slower. One, two, three, yeah. four, one. And in this case with three, four, a waltz would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, this whole feel. Now, there's plenty of songs that also go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. So sometimes it, it depends on how you want that pulse though. Now, if you do if you do one chord per measure, but you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or if you go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
that is a good way to tell if we're in 3, 4, or 6, 8. Kind of how long the measure lasts and what the feel is for it. That's a really good question, and it's a debate, and it's going to be a debate for, for a very long time. Uh, You'll see in foreign posts people arguing, oh, this song should be in 3, 4, this should be in 6, 8. And yeah, uh, it's not that clear cut all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I hope that oh, kind of... how about this? How about if it should be in 12-8 instead of 6 eight? I don't, don't even get started <laughs> on that. That's um, the thing. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, and it depends on also how you want to write your notes. If you're in 6-8 and you want something to go... Da, 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 you have to write everything in 16th notes. Oh. But if you want something to go da, 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 in 3-4, then you write them as 8th notes. So it depends because our denominator is different. Remember, in 3-4, that's a quarter note pulse, and in 6-8, it's an 8th note. And I probably said oh. a whole bunch of jargon <laughs> that nobody understands, but I hope that gives you a little bit. To Maybe you've with. fought it for more questions. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We had one other person, um, I think you pronounce the name Guru, and apologies if I mispronounced that. Um, who said, please play me finger style, but I'm not sure if there's a specific question. So, Gurung, if you're listening, please let us know what the actual like, question is. What about finger style you're curious about? Okay. Yeah. Um, while we wait for hopefully an answer, let's do for raffle or... Okay, time anything? for the raffle. Listen. Okay, so this is our monthly raffle, and these are for students who have completed the practice plan for the month. Um, by the way, that just means that they've at least spent 10 minutes on the the lesson, they didn't have to perfect it. And there's a new lesson every day, so 20 lessons throughout the week. Let's see who we got. I'm gonna have my amazing assistant, Isla, choose one oh, for me. Oh, Isla's here. Choose one for me. Thomas's daughter. Let's bring your kid to work day today. Yeah. Thank you. We have David Muir. David Muir, congratulations. Good job. And good job for everybody who participated. The real winner is anybody who completed the 12th the 20 sessions because you've got some more stuff to work with. And again, not that you've mastered them, but you know some other things that you can work on and got better. So any more questions? Uh, no, nothing from anyone else I can see. We'll close up today. Thanks, Tom, for joining Thank us today. You for Thank me. you, Ami and yeah. Felix. Thank you, Isla, for stopping in. And we will see you next month on the first Tuesday of the month at 12 noon. Till then. Bye for now.